But how many of you believe that this is going to be the year of harvest? I strongly believe God, God has prepared uh, such a time as this to bring forth the harvest, harvest season, harvest season. So God told me that like uh, when a flight takes off, it is, you know, like uh, it is going away from the gravitation. Like um, the moment it reaches like 16,000 feet, then it is easy. It is like uh, amazing. So no shake, nothing. But the moment when it takes off, that is the time you need more power and uh, more strength and more thrust or like more horsepower. Uh, so that is the reason why the engines really accelerate so speedily the moment when it is really takes off. So, so God told me that like even in, uh, in your life today, so there are certain things God may give you a promise, only that taking off moment is challenging. But once you take off, then it is going to be like amazing. So the moment when Jesus calmed the storm, then after that it was just fine for the people. Um, the disciples. So today God says that like uh, sometimes when God gives you a big promise, um, you know, like the takeoff will be shaking, the takeoff will be discouraging, the takeoff will be a little bit fearful. Um, but that is the time God told the Israelites, fear not, I am, I am with you and I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. So, so today, even today, God is saying that to you, God has wonderful promises in each one of your life. And um, to take off, it is really kind of like challenging sometimes. To take off, it is really shaky and bumpy. Uh, but the moment you take off and reach to 16,000 feet, then the pulls of the earth, the gravitational pulls of this earth will diminish. The more you go high, that's why like uh, the skydiving. So like the reason why they are diving uh, at a very, very high altitude, because it doesn't pull them down quickly. So it has a lot of breathing time so that like you can able to skydive and um, um, there is less of the gravitation and more of the uh, momentum. So God is going to bring momentum in your life. How many of you believe God will bring momentum? So this is the time and the season of God's momentum that is going to manifest in your life. Um, so when he brings momentum and acceleration, so all the um, aircraft flies full 500 kilometers per hour. So 500 kilometers. So, um, but it, it, it requires it to go to a certain height. Then only it can able to accelerate to 500 kilometers per hour, not on the runway. Runway it is not going to reach 500 kilometers per hour, but then like once it really takes off, once it really goes beyond the gravitational force, beyond any pull, any distractions, any birds that fly, or like anything that is really coming on the way. So it, above the clouds, then only it, it can able to have that 500 kilometers per hour speed or like um, several, I know like, um, uh, I, I would say like 400 or 500, 400 miles, uh, 350 to 400 miles per hour. So uh, the point is, this is really important to understand that God wants you to know that all these distractions and all these gravitational pull, all these birds that is really coming on your way and all these things that really challenging you is only at the ground level, only at the ground level or like the little bit, the sky, the cloud level. But the moment you fly above the clouds, then you are basically like uh, in a different realm. So God wants you to operate and go to the next realm. So always we battle in this lower realm and then like uh, we abort the takeoff and then we land, oh, it's really shaky and bumpy. Let's just like uh, land again. So there was a flight uh, flight um, that landed in Los Angeles. It uh, it was, um, um, it, it aborted the uh, process and then like it really, you know, like uh, came back. The problem, the problem is that like it was too much shaky, too much bumpy. So it aborted the mission basically. So many, many, many times in your life, like when you see certain things are shaking, certain things are bumpy, know that you are going to go to the great height. That is the reason why all these things are shaky. Without a little bit bumps and little bit shakes, you cannot be able to go to the height, higher altitude. You need to face those challenges. And uh, you need to know that like God is with you and you are not going to fall apart. You are not going to crash. You are not going to, you know, like um, uh, split open. You are going to cross over. How many of you believe that you are going to cross over? There is a, there is a crossover anointing the Lord told today. There is a crossover anointing that is released on your life today. So this is the time and the season of your crossover, your crossover. So 
God wants you to cross over from one promise to the next promise. God gave Israelites, I'm going to take you to the nation that is going to flow with milk and honey. And God fulfilled that. He made the Israelites to cross over the Red Sea, cross over the river Jordan, and then they entered into the promised land. And when I was in the river Jordan last year, I was in river Jordan 2023, August I was there in river Jordan and um, Galilee, Sea of Galilee, river Jordan, and uh, many other places. And uh, the moment I was standing there, God told to pray for the peace in Israel, peace in Jerusalem. Um, because that is the, like that August, like October and August is just like uh, one month uh, in between. So, so God told that like uh, he prophetically sent and then he told, pray for Jerusalem, pray for Israel. Because the time of my coming is getting very, very closer. The coming of the Lord is very closer. You can see the orchestration of everything, the red heifer that was sent from Texas to uh, Israel. like um, And uh, all those things are prophetically timelined, prophetically prepared by God. And God prepared everything. I strongly believe the coming of the Lord is going to be very, very sooner than later. Um, and that we see that like uh, everything is setting a stage up ready. Every stage is ready. Um, so everything is really uh, prepared for the coming of the Lord. But in this time and the season, but today, God wants you to live a victorious life. How many of you believe? Because until Jesus comes, you cannot be able to, you know, like quit. Okay, Jesus is coming. I'm not going to do anything. No, Jesus is coming. So, but until he comes, you are called to live victoriously. So God wants you to live victory. Victory over everything. Victory over everything that is affecting your life. Victory over every attacks of the enemy. Because the enemy wants to affect you, attack you by giving you a lot of uh, stress and a lot of failures or a lot of rejections, a lot of uh, uh, pain, a lot of sickness or a lot of disease, a lot of poverty, a lot of failures after failures and a lot of suicidal thoughts and a lot of so much of wound that the enemy brings to keep you uh, downplayed, to keep you by aborting your takeoff so that you don't really cross over, you don't really reach your destiny. But today, God wants you to prophetically shake that all the fear. Fear is the main thing because, you know, like researchers say, 99% of the things that people fear won't happen. 99 only only one person 99 percentage of the things that people fear for oh i'm afraid of this i'm afraid of that what might happen so what what will happen here no nothing will happen because 99 percentage of the things people fear for is primarily from the enemy fear is not from god and god is god of faith god always gives you boldness and he gives you even in the impossible situation god gives you amazing possibility there was a mother uh, in colorado and uh, sh uh, her son was playing in the uh, outside her home and uh, and a lorry came and uh, hit the son and then his head was completely opened and brain and everything came uh, came out she's a believer mother she put all the brain and everything put inside and then she laid the hands i come back come my son will come back right now in jesus name he started to speak immediately Hallelujah. see that is our god so others will think my 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 son's head is slashed and it is over, it is crushed and, um, and, and that is the normal carnality. But this mother, she did not really find who is the truck driver and let me go and have a fight. No, I'm going to really fight this battle of faith. I want my son to come back life right now. She put everything back into the head and then she commanded to be sealed in Jesus' name. So without anything major, God made this possible and uh, that is our God. So death people, dead people who are dead, they are resurrected in the name of Jesus because of faith, because of faith. So when you have faith, Jesus said, these signs will follow those who believe. They will speak in tongues and uh, you know, like uh, they will raise the dead, they will heal the sick. Raise the dead is for those who believe. Believers. Well, the reason why our name became believers is because we believe in Jesus and the finished work. So I strongly believe if that is possible, if this mother can able to bring back her son and if uh, dead can be raised and uh, Jesus commanded, this, this is not something like any anyone uh, life experience. This is something Jesus told that you can bring death to life. How can you, how can someone die? Obviously that accident, someone can die or like uh, any heart attack or any kind of things. There are so many things that people can die. But Jesus said, you can able to resurrect them so obviously you are reversing what the enemy has done in people's life. So what the truck driver and the enemy and everyone did, 
so that mother reversed it reversed the death to life god is calling you to bring reversal how many of you wants to bring reversal because god requires your participation so doctors may say that like you have cancer but god is going to rewrite that report but he he expects you to align with heaven when you align with heaven when you know that i'm going to not believe in the doctor's report i'm going to believe in god's report over me god's report is always yes and amen his promises are yes and amen his report is a good report over me and god said there is no fault in you god told israel jerusalem israel there is uh, my my beloved there is no fault in you there is no you are perfectly perfect you are completely whole you are fully full you are wholesome you are abundantly well and that is what god sees you so the moment you start seeing yourself the way how god sees you it changes your destiny so but the moment when someone sees how devil sees you then that changes the destiny in a opposite direction see condemnation is one of the key area enemy makes you to stop from approaching god so I, that is the reason why you need to know you are under grace and not under the law the moment you know that you are under the grace you can able to exercise the dominion so without knowing that you are under the grace it is impossible to get close to god anyone who is in law they are not close to god when i say law meaning like anyone who believe in them um own self righteousness they cannot able to have faith because they believe in their own effort and obviously their effort is limited but the moment when they believe i am under the grace and i'm going to believe in what jesus finished on the cross for me then i can able to ask big think big i can able to walk in the wholeness of god and i can able to see the results that comes in my life um so this is very important god told to pray specifically for rain in this nation because rain is something you know like uh, um i i it is really causing so much of um trouble without rain without rain so too much rain also trouble uh, because that is uh, causing flood but uh, no rain also a trouble and a concern so god told to pray and god i strongly believe god is going to shower the rain in this nation and uh, you're going to uh, see that as we pray we'll pray at the end but i strongly believe god is going to shower the rain um so god told that this is the time you need to um have this audacity and boldness to to ask big you know like elijah bible says that he's an ordinary man like you and me but when he prayed there was a huge rain when he prayed there was rain stopped when he prayed there was a fire that came in so when he prayed we see that like god gave boldness and courage to go and uh, speak to jezebel and uh, pull down the jezebels uh thrown and god really gave boldness this is the time and the season god is going to bring sudden shift in the nation how many of you believe sudden shift yes so god is going to bring a sudden shift and uh every jezebel spirit and every territorial spirit that is operating in this nation will be cut off if you believe if you believe because uh, this is biblical god says that you are going to entering enter into the season of biblical times where like god is going to bring sudden change sudden change you know like as long as jezebel was ruling um, so we see that like jezebel like very powerful impossible to dismantle but god dismantled just like that when when god raised a jehu just like that god dismantled so i strongly believe god is going to it's all about like spiritual battle every jezebel spirit territorial spirit that is operating against this land the lord is going to shake that and that's the reason why we gathered here to shake the strongholds god says that i will i will bring shaking today i was like um, in the in the flight i was reading one of the uh, passage in the psalms like where he says that through earthquake god speaks through you know like uh, signs and wonders god speak so when he and 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 there is a in the forest the moment when god speaks there is a new birth that is how in the in the in the kadesh in the wilderness of kadesh when the voice of the lord is heard that is like a, a new birth that's amazing so the voice of god brings new birth the shaking the voice of god brings shaking i strongly believe that is going to be shaking in everyone's life shaking in the nation and shaking will result in settlements always whenever there's a shaking 
that is always a settlement. And I strongly believe we are entering into a season of shaking and uh, turbulence and um, shaking. But this is not the time to quit. This is the time to hold on, hold on and buckle up. And that is the key important thing in faith. You know, like when the enemy tries to rattle or shake you in multiple ways, God shakes the enemy. So his shaking will not affect you, the believers, but the shaking when it comes from God, it affects the enemy. So I strongly believe, so God is entering entering you into a season of shaking, and but this shaking is going to shake your wilderness. It is going to shake your wilderness and dryness. It is going to bring um, the dryness into a fertile land. How many of you believe that your life is going to become a fertile land and uh, when there's a fertile land then always there is a growth that's why like israel today we see that it's a fertile land because god created that to be and on top of that god gave wisdom how to cultivate that fertile land if you go to israel and drive like i, I drove like hundreds of miles on a two three days continuously um and um all two three days i see like various trees and um variety of trees impossible trees are growing flourishing you see, like everywhere it looks like dry, but then the, the, the harvest is so plenty. Harvest is plenty. You see dates, you see like multiple other green green trees and green plants and green, green fruit bearing plants. So which is totally impossible, but because God gave the land as a fertile land and also like a, a, a amazing wisdom to cultivate. So Israel is, you know, like teaching Iran farmers how to cultivate. They're teaching. They have a uh, telegram group and in the group they are really teaching teaching the Iranian and other Middle Eastern people, neighbors, farmers how to cultivate, how to grow crops in the middle of the wilderness. Who gave that wisdom? God gave that wisdom to Israeli farmers and Israeli um, you know like researchers so they were able to utilize the fertile land and then see the harvest in the middle of nowhere. So God is going to give you creative ideas creative wisdom and he's going to give you creative plans to prosper the plans of God is always to prosper you not to harm you and he has amazing plans so the plans of God the moment you come into the plans of God all your wilderness will be over so all your emptiness will be over and um, uh, every patterns of the enemy will be over so th that is the key the mom as long as Israelites are walking in the plan of God they always prospered they always thrive they always uh, unafraid. They were not afraid of enemies. They were bold and they are more than a conqueror. They are courageous. But the moment when they deviate from the plan of God, that is when they have been attacked and pushed back uh, and uh, hurt and wounded. And so many things came to Israel because in the Bible, based on the uh, scriptures, like uh, because they deviated from the plan of God. So this evening, God wants you to stick on to the plan of God. Stick to the plan of God and you will prosper. That is why like uh, uh, in the Proverbs, like uh, commit your ways to God, meaning like let your plan be God's plan, let God's plan be your plan. So when your plan and God's plan marry together, then that is going to be a happy ending. And that is the key. So when you always align yourself with God's plan, God will take you to the next realm. So, you know, like there is an atmosphere and there's a stratosphere. So, so basically like uh, uh, when you go to the next level, when rockets go to the next level, it requires very, very less effort to accomplish the mission. It requires more, 90% of the power of the rocket is needed at the time of launching. But after it is launched, then it requires very, very less power, very, very less power to just like cruise, cruise. So that is the key. So even today, God wants you to know that you need um, more power. He gives you more power to launch. Launching requires more power. But the moment you are launched, then it is going to be like cruising. It is going to be like easy. So it is going to be a next realm. So I strongly heard the Lord say that I'm going to take each one of you to the next level. How many of you want to go to the next level? Because we have been struggling in the lower level and then we land immediately without even taking off. Some of you, you are going to go to the depth of God's glory. See, everything has a level. Everything, like it's a, maybe, uh, you know, like in your in your walk with God, there's a level. Enoch walked with God and he was taken by God to the next level. Uh, you know, like uh, Elijah walked with God. That closeness and intimacy made him to bring fire and he know 
my god always listen to me abraham so he know that like uh, god has called him as friend because he always consulted with god and he walked with god so he know god and god know him and he know when he pray god answers so that is the kind of intimacy god is calling you into so god is calling you not as the helper alone but he wants you to be uh, you know like a day to day walk with you he wants to walk day to day with you not only god said like call unto me during uh, the time of trouble i will help you but then like uh, let's not be the people who call god only at the time of trouble but let's always walk with god that is the lifestyle god wants to cultivate today this is the word god wants to give you so what is activation god wants to activate you you buy a cell phone you buy a sim card you activate the sim card to make that connection to the towers the unless there is a sim card there is no activation right that there needs to be some substance that connects to the local tower the moment it is connected to the tower it is seamless so always connected as long as your phone is on it's always connected the same way god wants you to always connect to heaven always be connected with heaven and always be uh, you know like um, listening to god and how many of you know god always speaks he always speaks he always speaks the moment you pause and listen you hear him so that is the key god all god loves to speak he loves to speak he always speaks and uh, the moment you listen then the spirit of god will uh, quicken you and then he will tell you what to do every time every day so that closeness and intimacy is what like made abraham to ask some something big and that closeness what made daniel to even pray in the middle of the uh, lions den that closeness is what really made yes that to pray i'm going to pray boldly for next 3 days i'm going to pray and i'm going to go and talk to the king and the history changed amazingly so so today god wants you to talk to him and listen to him and also like uh, he wants to take you to the next level he wants you to take to the next realm of god's glory he wants you to take in the next level in your business and he wants to take you to the next level in your studies or he wants to take you to next level in your career he wants to take you to the next level in your job uh, and in ministry some of your ministry doing ministry god wants to take you to the next level in the ministry he wants to do that he wants to accelerate you in his glory so this is going to be amazing so yesterday god told uh, there are some of you here operated or like uh, attacked by the suicidal spirit god told me that there are some at least one or two they are being impacted by the suicidal spirit because sometimes you think that it is better to die that is the word that elijah heard that's the exact word god he told that like i'm going to uh, god take my life that's that's another way of suicidal so basically god take so god is going to break that today god is going to break that today in some of your life you are getting the thoughts like what is the purpose of my living and you are really frustrated about your life circumstances and your history and also uh, your present you you see you see no progress at all so but god is going to bring progress today how many of you believe it is going to be so powerful and god is going to break every wilderness and he's going to break every barriers and every challenges are going to be broken hallelujah yes he's going to um set you free and uh, i wanted to release one other important word and i'm going to pray and prophesy as god gives unction so the one important thing that the lord told me to wrap this up and i'm going to um release the word there was a um, mountain there was a mountain i see the uh, mountain like uh, the beginning of this um, meeting i saw a mountain that mountain was filled with uh, uh, you know like a colorful glory when i say colorful it was like a very dark when i say dark like um, dark green and uh, dark uh, um, you know like um, red and uh, i see that this this mountain is having multiple colors and but it is really radiating god's glory it is radiating god's glory and uh, i see that the lord told that like uh, uh, this day marks the beginning of new level of glory in each one of your life Amen. so the glory is you can taste the glory you know like similar to how you taste the food uh, you can taste the glory of god in the different realm so you can able to taste the glory so that's why bible says oh uh, taste and see that the lord is good and uh, when when we say lord lord is full of glory god is full of glory heaven is full of glory god is filled with glory when when moses when moses really saw our god he he asked god show me your glory because moses understood 
God is glorious. So he wants to see the glory. He know God is not ordinary. He is glorious. So he wanted to tell God, God, I want to see your glory. And um, God caused all the goodness to pass over Moses. The glory of God is in his goodness. So goodness, he wants to do good things to you. And um, uh, it is really, really important. And it's really important to understand when you, when you do good things to others, you, you are really satisfied. But God always wants to do good things to you. That is the reason why you are doing good things to others. It is the nature of God. You are seeing how good God is. And because our God is good, so you are reflecting and radiating that glory. And, and that's why Jesus said that, let all men see the good works of your hands and glorify your Father in heaven. So there is a goodness and our goodness of God. The goodness of God and glory of God is interconnected. That's why Jesus said that, let all men see the good work and then glorify your Father. And even right now, I strongly believe God is going to make you to experience His goodness more in your life starting today. So you are going to experience the goodness like never before. How many of you believe that? I believe that. Yes, let's all stand up. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. We glorify your name. We exalt your holy name. Hallelujah. We pray for a rain in this land and every dryness, dryness go away. Thank you, Jesus. Someone with the heart pain, you have a severe uh, left side of your chest. You have a pain for so long on and off. Right now, I see that the Lord is really uh, healing you, touching you. Hallelujah. Let's all lift up our hands. Thank you, Father. Oh, we praise you, Jesus, for your divine healing. Hallelujah. Whoever needs healing in your physical body. Hallelujah. Every muscle pain. Hallelujah. Every bone pain. And every area where you are struggling. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Every diabetes and every pressure, every blood pressure and every sickness. Hallelujah. Is leaving this place right now. Hallelujah. Wherever you have sickness in your body. Just lay hands and just trust God. Thank you, Jesus, for a divine healing, a divine intervention. Thank you, Father. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. Such a time as this, your glorious presence, your glorious hand is coming upon everyone here. Everyone is going to be filled with your glorious hands. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Father, for such a time as this. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We praise you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. The Lord says that, Hallelujah. I'm releasing the entrepreneurs in this place. Hallelujah. God is raising entrepreneurs in this place. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God told me that, you know, like I'm raising entrepreneurs. Hallelujah. Believers who believe in Jesus are going to become entrepreneurs. Hallelujah. You might be working for a job from 9 to 5 or like 9 to 9. Uh, but God says that that is going to change because I'm going to give you some idea to start your own company. Hallelujah. This is the word for more than one. Hallelujah. That God says that I'm going to give you the spirit of entrepreneurship. God is the first entrepreneur. He created Adam and Eve. He appointed them by giving them a job. Take care of this God and hallelujah. God says, I am the first entrepreneur and my children, you, I'm a really giving you the entrepreneurship mindset today. Hallelujah. Adoption of the mindset of the Father. Hallelujah. You are going to be entrepreneur in some way. Hallelujah. In some capacity. In some hallelujah level. God is releasing that anointing upon everyone here. Thank you. How many of you believe you are going to be an entrepreneur? Hallelujah. Business owner. You are going to own things in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Even in the real estate. Hallelujah. Even in the agriculture. Hallelujah. Even in the technology. Even in the science. Hallelujah. Even in the biotech and every area God says I'm going to raise entrepreneurs. Hallelujah. Thank you Jesus. And I'm going you. It may be a small beginning to not despise the small beginning. God says, I'm going to take you to great heights for my glory. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Father. We glorify your name. You are, hallelujah. Some of you are going to, some of you are going to be employer rather than an employee. Because God is releasing that anointing on some of you here. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Father. Hallelujah. The reason why you have been employee for so long is to be trained.
trained to learn hallelujah to understand and now i am going to make you an employer for my glory hallelujah thank you jesus we praise you father hallelujah the oppressor cannot oppress you i'm not talking about the company i'm talking about the spirit of oppression hallelujah the spirit of oppression is leaving everyone here hallelujah whatever is oppressing you today maybe a stress is oppressing you your debt may be oppressing you financial crisis may be oppressing you your ma marriage may be certain people you are having challenges in oppression hallelujah your children may be oppressing you or your job is oppressing you or whatever is oppressing you today the lord says that the spirit of oppression hallelujah the spirit of oppression the spirit of suppression is leaving you today in the name of jesus oh we praise you father such a time as this that you are going to shake the wilderness you're going to bring the ba barrier breaking anointing hallelujah oh we praise you jesus we glorify your name for such a time as this you are we are going to shake the wilderness upon the people's life thank you father oh we praise you jesus hallelujah thank you father i see the glory of god is coming upon each and every one i see a fire on everyone's head hallelujah on top of everyone's head the same way how in the upper room there was a fire on the top of the head of everyone i see that the fire is coming upon everyone the lord says my beloved you are fired today you are fired up with joy you are fired up with amazing glory you are fired up with amazing anointing anointing to move forward anointing to accelerate hallelujah anointing to press on anointing to hallelujah manifest the glory of god hallelujah god's glorious anointing is coming upon you the lord says barrier breaking anointing hallelujah my anointing that is in you is going to break every barrier whatever is your barrier red sea is your barrier it will be broken hallelujah Jericho wall is your barrier it is broken hallelujah hallelujah jordan river it will be broken it will cut off hallelujah you will have a way through you will cross over cross over anointing is coming upon each one of you right now oh we praise you father hallelujah someone here you are going through a very very a uh, critical condition in your family situation you are at the, at this time of like a separation and so many things that is going on god says i'm going to rebuild your life and i'm going to reestablish your life hallelujah you have been through so much of trauma and pain in your family and you are really shaken and broken because of all the events that happened in your life but the lord says that my beloved i'm reestablishing you i'm rebuilding your life and reconstructing your life and you will be a finished garden you will be a finished building you will be a watered garden hallelujah thank you jesus oh we praise you someone with the eye problem the lord is bringing a divine healing in your right eye you have a problem hallelujah sometimes even the left eye also causing some problem i see that the lord is bringing a divine deliverance in your eye eye issue issue thank you jesus hallelujah i see that some there, there is there is there are certain things like a, um you know like a tumor it is disappearing in the name of jesus the tumor that you had before it will never come up again it will never come up again in the name of jesus it will dissolve it will disappear in the name of jesus the egyptians that you see today you see them no more that is the word god gave to israelites and it they never came again because the egyptians that you see today the tumor that you see today the sickness that you see today the poverty that you see today the depression that you see today you see them no more in the name of jesus hallelujah you see them no more hallelujah the lord is really uh, raising you up as a warrior i see there's a warrior anointing coming how many of you want warrior anointing god is releasing a warrior anointing upon you you are more than a conqueror you are a warrior you are warrior you are going to raise up you are going to shine thrive and multiply thank you jesus god is bringing a supernatural deposit of glory supernatural deposit of destiny Hallelujah God says my beloved you are destiny maker hallelujah thank you jesus oh we praise you father such a time as this hallelujah thank you father thank you glorious jesus hallelujah someone here you are very much concerned about your children your your children your children is going astray and they are really uncontrollable they you wanted them to be here but they are not here or they are already here but still they are really kind of like going in a direction 
that you never wanted them to go. So this is the time God is really touching all the parents who are having children. The Lord says that I'm going to give you wisdom and I'm going to give you something. I'm going to bring the children's heart back to you. The heart of your child is going to come back to you. Hallelujah. The Lord is bringing a reversal in your children's life. The Lord is bringing repentance in your children's life. There is a heart of repentance, heart of reversal, heart of change, heart of comeback moment. The Lord is really bringing bringing an amazing comeback moment in your children's life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You will see them come back to you. You will, the, they will know the truth and the truth will set them free. Hallelujah. The kids that are separated, you will see them come back to you. Thank you, Jesus. They will know the truth and the truth will set them free. Thank you, Jesus. I see a powerful reversal on those children who are really affected, who are confused and the Lord is bringing clarity. The Lord is bringing clearance in their life. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I see some of you, you have a blood related issue, blood related issue, any form of blood related issue. The Lord says that I'm healing them. Hallelujah. Right now, the divine healing of the Lord is coming upon you. By the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Blood issue, blood related issue. It's healed by the stripes of Jesus. Oh, we praise you, Father. Hallelujah. Such a time as this, we praise you, glorious Father. Glorious King. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing compares to your matchless love, O oh Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. You are a good, good Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wonder-working God. We praise you, Father God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, glorious King. We praise you. We exalt your holy name, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Such a time as this. I bless everyone who gathered here and thank you Lord for there was a divine impartation that happened in everyone's life. Hallelujah. Divine destiny that happened. We praise you Jesus. Thank you Father. Let your name be glorified and magnified. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. So I'll be here.